w one thing which has been very clear is that the Pondoland Royal House at Augeni, I, I do not recall in this present era since 1994 them having it easy, they've had it difficult throughout. And there is also a perception that the, the, the king is an obstacle to the political ambitions and the economic ambitions of well-placed people in that area. The recommendation made by the Commission on Traditional Leadership Disputes and Claims in response to a claim by Zanzuko Sikau to kingship of the Amabondo people and the acceptance of that finding by President Zuma um, in July 2010. And um, on behalf of King and Bondombini Sikau, we have brought an application in the High Court in Pretoria to set aside that decision, the decision to recognize Zanzuko Sikau as king and to depose King Bondombini Sikau. The, the background to the work of the Commission on Traditional Leadership Disputes and Claims was the enactment of the Traditional Leadership Governance Framework Act in 2003, which was enacted in order to place um, the institution of traditional leadership on a proper footing in South Africa in the light of the, of the Constitution of 1996. And as part of that legislation, the Commission on Traditional Leadership Disputes and Claims has been established uh, in institutions of traditional leadership across the country by past forms of, of discrimination either by the apartheid state, colonial administrations. Well, the case of Zanzuko Sikau before the Commission was essentially that he was the true heir to the throne by virtue of the, the um, practice of Ukungena having been performed and which, gave, which, which, was, uh, which resulted in the birth of his father. As between one of the, the widows of the late King Mandlonke, Matlingi, and, and his, his grandfather Nelson Sikha. Now, for that to hold water, Matlingi first would have to be the great wife, in other words, the tribal wife for whom the tribe had paid Lobola. Our contention is that she was not the great wife. By her own word, she's not the great wife. So I think that in the light of that and various other factors, we would argue that Ukungena could not in fact have taken place. And that therefore the claim of Zanuzuko has got no merit. The Ukungena would have taken place allegedly in 1947, some very nearly 10 years later. Mandlonke died in 1938 without a great wife, without any male heir. And therefore, the, the position was taken at the time. Um, there was a commission at the time, 1938, which looked into the matter. It, it really did, we, we believe, in fact, look at the matter from the point of view of Mbondo custom at the time. And the, direct, and the governor general, in making the decision to appoint Buta Sikau, the father of Mbondo Mbeni Sikau, we say was made in terms having due regard to the customs of the Mbondo people. In fact, the rulings, the findings that they made relating to customary law and the application of it to the particular circumstances that prevailed there is, uh, cannot be faulted. And the um, Commission's criticisms are, in my opinion, spurious, ahistorical, and amount to historical revisionism. The, the great house had died out. There was no heir. Maglingi, according to the evidence that we put forward, was not the great wife. So therefore, any Ukungena with her could not have produced an heir or have revived the great house. Up until um, a chief or the king in Yawuza, who was, I think, the great-grandfather of, of the great king Faku, 
kingship of the Mbondo people had devolved according to the, the ordinary law of the Mbondo people, which was that the, the eldest son of the first wife was the heir to the kingship. Now, Wuza changed that tradition, saying that a tribal wife subsequently married, for whom the Lobola was paid by the tribe, would be the wife who, who would produce the heir to the throne. Of course, that custom, it has not always been possible to observe that custom because there have been instances where the great wife has not produced an heir, indeed where the heir produced by the great wife has been rejected. In this case, in 1938, when Mandlonke died, there was no great wife, no male heir, and the decision of the Bondo people under the, under, under the arbitration of um, the king of West Bondoland, Porto, was that the great house had died out, that the system established by Inyawuza had therefore failed, and that in those circumstances one had to look to the ordinary traditions again. One had to, where there was now a gap or a lacuna in the process, one had to revert to the original customs of the Mbondo people, which was that one looked to the eldest son of the eldest wife, and that's how Buita Sikau. It was on that basis the decision was made to, to enthrone Buita Sikau. And it was on that basis that the decision was made by the Governor General. The Governor General's decision in 1938 was in accordance with custom of the Mbondo people, and that, must be, that decision must therefore stand. In relation to the Commission's comments on the 38 Commission. The comments are ahistorical, they seem to be informed by prejudice rather than any particular insight or understanding to the history of that Commission and the work of that Commission, which was very thorough, which had the benefit of being located in the time and the place that this drama was unfolding, that sat at all the major centers in Pondo land to hear the opinions and hear the inputs of the Amapondo and took the customary law very very seriously indeed. President Zuma made the announcement of his acceptance of the Commission's recommendation. We brought an application within a few months of that. It was in two parts. Firstly, um, an urgent application to stop the actual enthronement of Zanozuko pending the outcome of the review application which would be heard in due course. We have now filed the opposing uh, full supplementary papers. The um, Zanozuko and the state and the state president must now and the commission itself must now respond to that. We would then have a chance to, re to, to reply to their answer and um, then the matter can be set down for hearing. So we will be looking to a hearing towards the middle of the year and in court. Section 33 of the Bill of Rights guarantees fair administrative action. In the circumstances of this case, that would have entailed that the report of the Commission be made available to the Royal Family and to the King, that they be given an opportunity to comment on it, to consider it and to make representations to the President before he acted on the recommendations or the findings of that Commission. The, the interim interdict which was granted in fact stops or prohibits the State President or any other government official from formally enthroning Zanzuko by giving him a certificate of recognition as kingship, which is a requirement, a formal requirement in terms of the Act for him to be enthroned. It is the final form of enthronement requirement and that has been interdicted pending the outcome of the case and um, indeed the effect of this then is to preserve King Mpondombini as the king and his incumbency as king remains in place and the court order specifically says for example that his salary must continue to be paid. So he is currently the legal king in the eyes of the law of the, of the Mpondo people pending the outcome of the review application in the High Court in Pretoria. It would probably go to the Supreme Court of Appeal first on appeal, but it goes through all courts before it gets to the Constitutional Court. So the Constitutional Court's got the, the benefit of, 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 of the judgments of the lower courts.